Welcome to a lecture on the domain of function from its equation. In this unit, we have learned that the equation of a function can give us information of the values of the input variable that will result in a real answer. If the equation has no denominators or square roots, then the domain is all real numbers. we can write that the domain is either all real numbers, the symbol, or we can also write it in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. If the equation has denominators, then each denominator must be not equal to zero, because division by zero is undefined. In these two examples, the denominator x must be not equal to 0 for g and the denominator 2x plus 3 must be not equal to 0 for h. The domain of g is all real numbers except for 0. We can write that in interval notation as negative infinity comma 0 union 0 to positive infinity or we can write it in set builders notation as x is a real number such that x is not equal to 0. The domain of h is x is not equal to negative 3 halves. We can write it as negative infinity comma negative 3 halves open union negative 3 halves to infinity in interval notation or we can write it as x is such that x is not equal to negative 3 halves in set builders notation. If the equation has square roots then its radicand must be greater than or equal to zero. In these examples, the radicand x minus 3 for k must be x minus 3 greater than or equal to zero. Or x greater than or equal to 3 and this is the domain of k, we can write it as closed 3 comma infinity open in interval notation or we can write it as x is such that x is greater than or equal to 3 in set builders notation. The radicand 6 minus 3x in m must be 6 minus 3x greater than or equal to 0 or x less than or equal to 2. The domain of m is negative infinity comma 2 closed if we want to write it in interval notation or x is such that x is less than or equal to 2 in set builders notation. So our two main domain restrictions are denominator not equal to 0 and a square root radicand greater than or equal to 0. In the case that we have both denominators and square roots, all restrictions must be found and the domain must take all restrictions into account. In the case of f, we have a denominator x minus 5 and we have a radicand x plus 2. x minus 5 must be not equal to 0, which makes x not equal to 5, and x plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0, 
which makes x greater than or equal to negative 2. After graphing both conditions, x not equal to negative 5 and x greater than or equal to negative 2, we see that the value x equal to 5 must be excluded from the interval negative 2 to infinity. Therefore, the domain is closed at negative 2 up to 5, open there, union 5 to infinity. In the case of g, we have a denominator, which is the whole square root, and we have a radicand that is only 7 minus x. The denominator square root of 7 minus x must be not equal to 0. This only happens when 7 minus x is equal to 0. That makes x not equal to 7. Also, the radicand 7 minus x must be greater than or equal to 0, which makes x less than or equal to 7. After graphing both conditions, here is 7 not equal to 7 and less than 7, we see that the value x equal to 7 must be excluded from the interval negative 7 to in negative infinity to 7. Therefore, the domain of G is negative infinity, comma, 7, open.